Bon Daf, Ein Chesom et Beis. And yesterday we began the sugya of Omar of Gidol, Omar Rav, which you'll see at the beginning of the Gemara, after the Mishnah, parallel to Tosa Shani, about 15 lines down from the top of the Omar. And we saw yesterday that Rav had a revolution of sorts. It was something that we would never anticipate. And that is, if the Basar Pesach became Tomei, and we learned in the Mishnah that in such a case, you're not Zorik the Dam, yet Rav says that if he went ahead and he was Zorik the Dam, then there is Ritzu Karbon, and he's potter from Pesach Shein. The Gemara immediately objected, Achilo. We require Karbon Pesach, Achilo. And at the time of the Zrika, the Pesach has to be Royal Achila. And in this case, if the Basra is Tomei, it's not Royal Achila. And the Gemara answers that according to Rav, this is Rav's revolution, Achila Loma Akva. The requirement of Achila's Pesach is not critical. And you could have a valid carbon Pesach, even if at the time of the Zrika, the Basa was Tomei and it was impossible to eat the Basa. And then the Gemara goes into a whole discussion, if you recall, about how to interpret the Pesach, because the Pesach says, Ish lefi achlo, and all the emphasis here is on Achila, Tachusu al hase, then the Shechita, you have to Shecht, the carbon Pesach on behalf of someone who could eat the karma. And in the case where Nitma Basar, there's no one who could eat the karma, it's not Roy Lachilo. So therefore, how could the karma possibly be valid by the Evid? And the Gemara says that whatever you find in the Pesach, it's only Le Mitzvah. It's a requirement, but it's not critical. It's not indispensable. So you could have. Zrikas Dama Pesach, even if the Basar does not lend itself to Achila. The Gemara rejects this from a Brisa that interprets the Pasuk, the Mixas Nefashos. And the Mixas Nefashos means that we have to have a Chabura. We have to count up people who will be designated to this carbon Pesach. And Eina Pesach Mitzchad El Limnuya. We know that if you check the carbon passage, the carbon is possible. And the reason for that is because only a manui could eat from the carbon Pesach. Now, if according to Rav, this requirement of Achila, as formulated by the Torah, Ish Lefi Acho is only the mitzvah, then if you have a shchita of a carbon Pesach, then the carbon should be kosher. And not only that, the Gemara goes even one step further. The Gemara points out that we have a hekesh between Ochlov and Minuyov. And just like Minuyov is a prerequisite in order for the carbon to be kosher, and it's got to be the Mixas Nefashos, so too, it's got to have Ochlov. And if you do a Shechita, not Shalom L'Shem Minuyim, but Shalom L'Shem Ochlim, for example, you shech the Karben Pesach, and it's on behalf of someone who's a, a zaken or a chole, and he's not Roy Lachiwa. That's Ma'akev in the Kapara Sakarban, and the Karben is possible. So how could Rav possibly say that if Nitma Basar, the Karban is kosher, but the evidence, if they went ahead and they were Zorik the Dam. So the Gemara makes a valiant effort to try to identify Rav with Rabbi Nosan, as if to say that Rav, Rav, the Amora, is standing on the shoulders of Rabbi Nosan, the Tana. And now we're going to embark upon an effort to prove that indeed, according to Rabbi Nosan, Achila Sapesach is not Ma'akiv the Karba. And that's what we got up to yesterday. Hey, Rabbi Nossam, where is Rabbi Nossam? So let's just see where we're up to now. If you see Tosis, Dibri Amaskal, Rabbi Nossam, you drop down 
approximately three, four lines. And the first word in the line is hey. Hey, Rabbi Nassan. Which Rabbi Nassan holds that Achila is not Ma'akiv the Karma? So the Gemara says the following. If it's Rabbi Nassan of the Brisa. Now, this is a very important halacha in Karbim Pesach, and that's called Shlichus. In fact, the Gemara Kedushin, quoting this statement of Rabbi Nassan, wants to establish that the source for Shlichus in the Torah, how do we know the Gemara asks that Shlichus is valid in the Torah? The Gemara quotes this halacha. Rabbi Nassan over Binayich, call Yisrael Yotzim the Pesach Echad. And Rabbi Nassan looks at the Pasuk. Hamad Lomer, it says, V'shachatu oso kol kahal adas Yisrael bein har bayim. And if you read the Pasuk carefully, it sounds like every member of kahal adas Yisrael is shechting the carbon Pesach. Now that's not logistically possible. V'chi kol kahal shochtim now, again, we're talking about one particular carbon Pesach. You have one lamb, and all of Klal Yisrael are shechting one lamb. It's impossible. Only one person can check the lamb. So what's this? V'shachat who also call Kadas? Halo eno shochet ele echad. Elo malamit she kol Yisrael yotzim in Pesach echad. Now, again, the thrust of the chidish, of the derivation of Rabbi Nassar, his ruling and his psak is shlichus, that you can have one shochet on behalf of all of Klal Yisrael. But there's another more subtle point here that underlies Rabbi Nassan, and that is how many people can eat a kezayis of the Basar Pesach? The Torah says, the achlu osam, that you have to eat it, right? The Pesach again says, ish lefi achlo, and we have a principle, ain't achil apachos mi kezayis. Well, it's impossible that one lamb would be sufficient to offer a kezayis to every last member of Klal Yisrael. And therefore, if this karmon, which Rabbi Nosan identifies as Pesach Echad L'chol Yisrael, and it's valid, Yotzim, everybody fulfills his obligation, where's the Achila? Let's tap Reuven on the back. And we're going to say to Reuven, oh, did you fulfill the Mitzvah of Karb Pesach? He's going to say, yeah, I fulfilled the Mitzvah of Karb Pesach. Why? Because there was a Shoche who had in mind all of Klal Yisrael. So I'm part of Klal Yisrael. He had me in mind as well. Then we ask him a second question. Did you eat from the Karb Pesach? No. And that's going to happen to 99.99%. You get the same response from every member of Klal Yisrael. I couldn't eat it. How many kids and what did this lamb? I don't know, by the way, which, you know, who's going to get first dibs? You know, who's going to, you know, everybody wants to eat from one lamb. Who who gets to eat it? You know, maybe we go through the Gemara in uh, Horios, you know, about uh, Kedima, you know, when you have to save a captive, you know, who gets saved first? You know, Koe, Levi, Israel, I don't know. You know, like, who's going to get on the first flight from New York, you know, that leaves... Uh, to Ben Gurion Airport on Thursday. In any event, so the Gemara thinks that if one seh, one lamb could suffice for all of Klal Yisrael, even though there's no kezayis for each one, it must be that Rabbi Nutsa maintains the position that achila lo ma'akva, that you can be a your mitzvah even without achila. Hence, Rab is going to tell you that even if nitma basar, and the karma was shechted on uh, in a way that no one could eat the basar. It doesn't matter because Achilo Ma'akva and Rav was standing on the shoulders of Rabbi Nassan. So the Gemara answers, this is a very lovely Gemara, very conceptual. The Gemara says, Dilma shiny hasam. The case of Rabbi Nassan is different. And although Achilo is Ma'akev, how could all of be Yotim Pesachel be Mimchichi Hani if one group 
we'll call it Ruvain Shimon Alevi. They decide they're not going to eat from the carbon Pesach. So Yisachar and Zvulun and God and Asher, they'll fit in in their shoes. And it goes back and forth. Whoever drops out, somebody else will fill his place. And basically what that means is that every single member of Klal Yisrael could eat from this carbon Pesach. In actuality, that's not true. There's no way that logistically it could be possible. They could orchestrate every single Jew getting it uh, but every Jew is included in the Achila of the Basar, and the Basar, the Karman, lends itself for each Jew to Achila. And we're going up to climbing up to theoretical realms over here. That means any there's there's no one who's excluded from the Achila. This is not like Rav's case. Rav's case is Nitma Basar. No one can eat the Basar. Can you say that under certain circumstances you'll be able to eat, you'll be permitted to eat the bus of the carbon? Impossible. It's common. But here, who are you going to exclude? No one is really excluded. So you could say that we require Achila, but we don't require Achila befall that every single Jew should actually eat the Kazais. But it means that the, as far as the carbon vessel is concerned, every Jew is included in Achila. And potentially he could eat it. Now, maybe we'll designate it to Ruben, Shimon, and Levi, but if they drop out, then the next, the next group will come on. Somebody is... So there's no one who's excluded. And therefore, this is called, as far as the carbon Pesach is concerned, you know, the chefts of the carbon, it's called Roy Lachila Lechol Yisra. As far as the carbon is concerned, any Jew could eat from that carbon. And therefore, for uh, you know, for Rav to derive his far-reaching conclusion in the case of Nitma Abbasa, that's not justified. You know, Rashi has another little nuance here. He says, uh, when, when the Gemara says, V'i Mimshechei Hani is Chazi Lahani, Rashi adds that you can say that the carbon is being brought on behalf of the second string that fills in and replaces the first string. So any person theoretically could claim that the carbon was brought on his behalf for him because he wants to exercise his rights to eat the carbon. Now, we have a tradition that Rav was standing on the shoulders of Rabbi Nassim. It's not the Rabbi Nosson of this Brisa to call Yisrael Shochatim Pesach Echod. That can't be the source for Rav. But can we find another statement of Rabbi Nosson that could actually serve as the source for Rav? And here, El Ahor Rabbi Nosson, we have a different Brisa that quotes Rabbi Nosson. And we're going to first, in this price, to learn the Shittas Chachamim, so don't get nervous. You know, sometimes you read the Gemara says, Kirisanya, and it says just the opposite. Well, that's because the Brisa quotes the first opinion as well. And the case is that Nimel of Chabur Achas, Chazum Nimel of Chabur Acheres. You had one carbon, and it was group A, we'll call it, and they decided that they are manu, they are registered on this carbon Pesach, every single person in that minion, in that uh, Chabur, is going to get himself a Kezayis Basar Min Pesach. Now, a second Chabura joins the first Chabura, but the only problem is that now that you have such a Rebu, you have so many people who are now jointly registered on one carbon, there won't be enough to supply a Kezayis Basar for each one of the Chabura. As long as there are only 10 people in the Chabura, we can guarantee a Kezayis for each one of the 10. Now there are 20 people in the Chabura because another 10 added on, they join the bandwagon, hop on the bus, Gus, you remember that? And now you got 20 people on a short, on a small little lamp and no one's going to get a Kezayis. So the Brisa quotes the sheet of the Chachamim, 
And that is Rishonim, Sheyesh Lem Kizayis, the first group that already signed up. Ochli. And therefore, they could be Makayim Ben Mitzvah, even though another group tried to join them, we're, we're going to earmark this carbon for the first group, such that each one in the first group will eat a kezayis. And therefore, he's Yotzi is mitzvah, uptur milasos, carbon sheni, pesach sheni. I mean, this last line, putur milasos, pesach sheni, is obvious. The only reason the Bryce spells it out is to emphasize the contrast between the Rishonim and the Achronim. Achronim, they're going to have to bring a carbon Pesach Sheni. And why is that? She'elem Kezayis. We don't have a designation of a Kezayis on behalf of the second 10 because we've already designated the 10 Kezayis worth of Basar, of carbon Pesach to the first group. First time. Is there for Ochlu? Then Minui is Batel and Pasel. And therefore, Chayom Lassus Pesach Sheni. They're not Minuyim on this Pesach. And when it says that Achronim, She'en Lem Kizais, Ein Ochlim, those words Ein Ochlim mean they're not allowed to eat from the Pesach Risha. Because if they would be doing so, they would be If you're not money on the Pesach, you're not allowed to eat from the carbon Pesach. And the Gemara later on is going to have a Gansa Sugya, whether or not a husband could make his wife into Manui so she's allowed to eat from the carbon Pesach. And an Adon who owns an Ebed, whether he could uh, make someone into a Manui, his Ebed into a Manui, so that now the Ebed is allowed to eat from the carbon Pesach. And the Gemara establishes that in certain cases the Adon doesn't have the power to do so because he has a partner in the Evid. The partner didn't agree that he they should designate this carbon on behalf of the Evid. And in those cases, you're not allowed to eat from the carbon pesach. Here's another case where you're not allowed to eat from the carbon pesach because you're the Chabura Shnia and you're going to undermine the first Chabura because we guaranteed by the skin of our teeth that each one of the first Chabura of the original uh, you know, registered Gets a kezayis. He says the following. I'm just reading you the footnote. He says, "Kevan shem minui shalahem al arishon, eno choshev minui." In other words, for them to push themselves in as a second minui in addition to the first minui, that's not considered minui. The kol shen aroy lachila ain minui of minui because now that we've already divided up. And designated the, the X number of Kizaisim, we'll call it 10 for the 10 people in the first group, is no Achila for the second group. And if there's no Achila for the second group, then Minui is totally bottle, it's invalid. They're not allowed to eat from this carbon Pesach. And why is it that their minu is invalid, the second group? Because it's not enough to afford them with an achila of a kezayis from the basa. And that's the law that we're going to derive from the pasuk. And that's ma'akev, that you must have an ability to eat the karma. The minu is only on the ochlim, and in the second group, you don't have any ochlim, hence the minu of the second group is completely invalid. And they are therefore enjoined and allowed to eat from the carbon pestle. So far, I mean, we see something that's really a million light years, light years away from Rav, because Rav says that, okay, nitma basar, carbon is kosher. We can be machsha the karma. He was saying, my friends, if you're not an ochel and you're not, you're not part of the minui, then find yourself Pesach Sheni a month down the line. That's all we can do on your behalf. That's the best we can do.
However, the Bryson now quotes Rabbi Nossin. That's the good news for Ra. Rabbi Nossin Omer, Elu vi Elu pturi milasos Pesach Sheni. If they went ahead and they were mockery of the Karmon and they were Zorek the Dam of the Pesach, and it's not possible for all these minuyim, if you add group one and group two together, to have eaten a kezai for each person. Nevertheless, no one, not the first group nor the second group, is obligated in Pesach Shem. In other words, the minu is valid, even though there's no way that the B'nai Aminui, the members of the second group that hopped on board, could get a kezais of Achilles Basa. And Rabbi Nossin says that Pturim from Pesach Shein. Hmm. Do you see clearly that Achilles HaPesach is not Ma'achit? Because there's no way that we can get a kezais for each one of the second Menei HaChabura. But you know what? Let me throw a svar at you here. If you don't mind. I didn't hear any objections, so it's very quiet. I would say the following. This raya from this second Rabbi Nossam, the Bryce of the second, is no better than the first raya. Because if Rabbi Nossam holds that the second Minui is valid, that means that the Bnei Aminui are also Ochlin. Ah, you'll ask me, what do you mean? 20 people cannot get 20 Kazesim. So we're going to first come, first serve. We'll give the Kazesim, the 10 Kazesim to the first group. The second group doesn't have Achila. Nay. Once they're Manui, and if the second Minui is, is recognized as a valid Minui, then each one, as we said before, in the case of a Pesach Echel Lekol, Lekol Akol for the entire cloud. So each one has a potential Achil of a Kezayis. We can't engineer it any better than we could if we had one lamb for all of Klal Yisrael. So in practical actuality, it's not going to be such that each one who's Manui will be eating a Kezayis. But once you're a Manui, you're included in the Achil of the Karm Pesach. Whether or not Befall in actuality, you'll exercise that achila and implement it. That depends, you know, will they, you know, who's going to wait online first and who's going to drop out? And uh, but we're not excluding anybody. Why does the Gemara think that this raya from the second Raya of Nosan is one up it on the first raya on the first Raya that one carbon could be brought? And Shechtin on behalf of all clouds. I suspect that the Gemara thinks in the Havamina that once you have two Chaburis, Bozech or Zeh, in chronological sequence, you had the first Chabura that joined and signed up on this carbon, and then a second Chabura, that's different than the case of Rabbi Nossin the first, where there was a Shechita on behalf of all of Klaus. There was one simultaneous Minui which was relevant to all of Klaus. Yisrael. There's no one who can claim, well, I got there first, I'm going to I'm going to get the Kizai's Bosser, and not you, because we're going to run out of it. We don't have enough dosages. The second case, though, Rav Nossam the second, the Gemara thinks that the second Minui could only be how if there is a guarantee of a Kizai's. If the second Minui was simultaneous with the first Minui, that would be identical with one carbon pesk on behalf of all of Klal Yisrael. And then I would give you the svara that, okay, I, I can't implement in actuality, guarantee that every person will lead a kezais, but nevertheless, every person is included in the minu. But 
to include a second minui following the first minui, when the carbon was designated for the members of the first minui, such that we have a kezai's boss of each one of the first minuyim, they should be blocking the second minuy according to the svara of Yachlu, right? What does the Pesach say again? Ish uh, What do you mean ish l'fiachlo? Tachusa. Tachusa means to be manu. Ish l'fiachlo. We already exhausted the ish l'fiachlo with the first kabura. How could you create ish l'fiachlo tachusa alaseh vis-a-vis the second kabura? Unless you hold that Pesach is kosher, even shalom, even though you would not guarantee that so and so will be able to eat a kezayis, so what? He's part of the carbon even without a kezayis, and that is a proof for Ra. So Gemara rejects and says, "Akati Dilma Shani Hasam the Mimshechi Hani." The same svar that we said before, that if any of the first group will decide, for whatever reason, we're not going to eat from the carbon pesach, therefore the second group will now fill in and replace the first group. So any particular individual, whether it's the first group or the second, is included in the carbon Pesach, even as far as Achille is concerned. I- again, in actuality, we cannot feed a Kezai's worth of Basa to all the members of the two Chaburs. That's for sure is impossible. But nevertheless, there is a possibility that the Pesach could be Roy for both chaburis, or for both members of, of the for the members of both chaburis. No one was excluded. We may not logistically be able to divvy it out in such a way that everyone gets a kezayis, but any one of them has rights and could alpidinis mutter for them to eat from the Pesach. So what did the Gemara change in the Teretz from the Havvina? Where was the rejection of the Havvina? I think what the Gemara is saying now is that don't disqualify the second Minu from the get-go because you cannot guarantee that they will eat from the Karmon. All I need for Minu is the potential to eat from the Karmon, the theoretical possibility that you might eat from Karmon. You're part of the Chabura, and it's ish l'fiachlo tachus alaseh, and you're called an ochel. In, in reality, we don't have enough to go around. I mean, Moshe Lamad Dover Dover. What would happen if there were 10 people money on a lamb, and then they made a mistake in calculation, or somebody ate a little bit too much? I don't know what would have happened. And the last guy in the line, you know, number 10, sorry, we ran out of bosar. Okay, I understand he wasn't a kind of mitzvah of Achilles boss of Pesach, but to say that he wasn't a kind of mitzvah of Havasa Karmon, as if to say he wasn't Manu, oh no. I'm not going to say, well, Hoover and Dovrelam Afreya, that you number 10 on the list were not part of the Minu. Because now I see that there was no uh, Kezai's boss that was designated for you that you could eat. No, we're not going to say that. For sure, he's yelled to the mitzvah of Again, we can't create out of you know out of iron age and say that he was yelled to the mitzvah achila. He didn't eat the carbon pesach. There was no meat left in the carbon pesach by the time he got there. But nevertheless, his minu is still valid. And ish l'fiachlo tachulas have he's called the fiachlo because he could have eaten it. Okay, somebody chop before him and got that last kizayis. If not for that, somebody, he would have gotten the last kezai. says no one was excluded. And now the Gemara is going even a, a step further. Even if I know for sure, Clark, and it's certain at the time of the Minui, that we have no spare kezaisim, we can still create a Minui based on the Svar of Imimshech, because each one has a theoretical right to eat from the Basar Pesach. So the Gemara says the following. Im came. If you're telling me that the reason why the second Chabura that joined 
subsequent to the first. They don't need a carbon Pesach Sheni. Why? Because imimshech, achli, if anyone of the first group would drop out, they could eat the carbon. Is listening, ho'el ru'uyim li mashek, my shekvar nizrak hadam. Very interesting view. We blinked and we missed a very important phrase in the Brysa. The Brysa says that according to Rabbi Nosan, Elu vi Elu pturim milasos pesach sheni. And I, if you know, if you covered the text, I would have said that the next three words would be Hoel uru uyim li mashek. If you're asking me why the second Chabura is included in the carbon that was brought and they don't have to replace it and bring carbon Pesach Sheni, the answer has to be because Dilma Ru'uyim Li Mashek. Instead, it says something totally different. Shekvar Nizrak Adam. Shma Mino says the Gemara that Bidam Talia Milsa so what does it mean that according to Rabbi Nosan, Bidam Talia Milsa, those are the words Chikvar Nizrak Adam, that the Zrika of the Dam was on their behalf as well, even though they're not Royal Achila. Again, not because they're Royal Achila and Shema Yimshak, that maybe somebody else will pull out. No, no, no. They're not Roy Lachiu. I grant you that. But Kfar Nizrak Adam. So what the Gemara is now doing is it's resurrecting the original Raya from this second Bryce of Rabbi Nasan for Ra. And we're going to prove from this Bryce of that according to Rabbi Nosan, Achila Loma Akva. Right? That's the Loshana Shas. Aval Achila Loma Akva, which is exactly Ra. And what that means is that if there was a Zrika Saddam on behalf of the second Chabura, despite the fact that they are not royal Achila, because we've already designated the carbon to the members of the first group. But Kfar Nizrak Adam, they were Yotze because there was a Zrika Saddam on their behalf, even though they don't have Roy Lachiu. So again, the Brysel omits this whole Svara of Yimshaku Yudeyem, that maybe there'll be others that will pull out so you could, you could theoretically eat from it. No, 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 that's not what we're going on. We're saying that according to Rabbi Nosan, it's a Bidyevit situation. Kvar Nizrak Adam. That sounds like Bidyevit, right? Kvar Nizrak Adam. And we're holding like Rav. I mean, Rabbi Nosan is the precedent, the precursor of Rav Shita. That even though they're not Roy Lachila, nevertheless, they could be out to the midst of Karm Pesach. If the Pesach is shechted on their behalf. Again, not only Shrita, but we need Zrika. He says here, Umitam Chenizrak Adam Yotzi Decho Vaso, Afal Gav Di Eina Ruim Lecho Mimenu, Lomi Shum Shem Yimshechu Hacherim Yuchlu Heim Lecho. Kishitas Rab Nasan Hemid Ravis Mishna Senu Lachemid the Evidim Zarkas Adama Pesach Koch. So, Mosai, to summarize, the Gemara offers two different explanations for, for Rabbi Nasan as to why the second Chabura we Yotze their Karman without Achila and they don't have to bring a Karman Pesach Shani. And then the Gemara, after considering both possibilities and explaining Rav Nasa, the Gemara goes back to read the language of the Brisa. So what are the two possibilities? 
either because to quote the Lashon HaGemara, Re'uyim ho'il re'uyim li mashech, that they were never excluded from Achila, and perhaps they'll, at the end of the day, they'll win the lottery, and they'll be able to uh, to eat from the Karm Pesach, because one of the members, or ten of the members of the first group will drop out. But the other explanation is because you don't need Royal Achil. We don't need Royal Achil. You could be Yotze, Korban Pesach, regardless or independent of the Achilles aspect. Yeah, you won't be the kind of Mitzvah Achila, but, but at least the Korban Pesach was brought for you, and you're part of that Korban Pesach. This, despite the fact that you won't be able to eat from the karma. There's not enough meat to go around. So Rav said, oh, if that's the if that's the insight into Rabbi, Rabbi Nassim's Shita, then I'm going to extend it to the case of Nitma Basa. Because if Rabbi Nassim is holding that you don't need Roy Lachila, and yet you don't say the mitzvah of Karm Pesach, I'm going to apply that to the case of Nitma Basa. And even if it's not Roy Lachila, nevertheless, you could be Yotze. So now the Gemara comes back to the Bryce and says, let's read the Bryce. So Rabbi Nossin says, Elu vi Elu Pturim, Shekvar Nizra Kadam. Okay. Let me just take a minute here, if you don't mind. Sometimes I have to reorganize myself. Oh. How's that? Now, this interpretation or reinterpretation, Rabbi Nasan, is it a last ditch effort to try to justify Rav and explain that Rav was basing himself on this new interpretation of Rabbi Nasan? If you would ask me, I would say absolutely not. This is not uh, some sort of push out of desperation. This is a meticulous reading of the language Rabbi Natsan when he says, Shikvar Nizra Kadam. Meaning they could be part of the Minu, such that the Zrika of the Karm Pesach is on their behalf, despite the fact that they're not Roy Lachil. We cannot give them more than what we have, and we've already given up what we have and given it out to the first group. But the Gemara says no. This is Dochak. My Dochkin de Rav de Mukim le Mas Nisan. Lechat Chilo, Uke Rabbi Nosan. The Gemara has another problem. Even if you convince me by meticulously reading the language of Rabbi Nosan in the second Brysa, that Rabbi Nosan doesn't require Roy La Chilo, and you can be Machshel the Karman even on behalf of those who will not eat from the Bosa either because there's not enough uh, kazais to go around, or in Rav's case, because the boss are contracted to him. The Gemara has no problem with that. But I mean, Nassan is a dissenting minority. The Chachamim never accepted Rabbi Nassan. And now Rav goes back to our Mishnah, and he says that in our Mishnah, if Nitma Basar, we're going to interpret it that the Korban Pesach is still valid mm -hmm. if Kfar Nizar Kadam. And we're going to base it on Rabbi Nasser. So Gmaris, that's a dochak. Where do you see in our Mishnah any sort of a, an allusion to the fact that 
the Mishnah holds like Rabbi Nasa, who's the minority opinion. My doche ra, the mukim la masnisen. Then he says that Mishnah, in the case of Nitma Bosa, is the Mishnah holds the lechatki we am allowed to be zorik to dam. But with the evidence, if you would zorik to dam, then the carbon is kosher. And that's all according to Rabbi Nasan, who holds that Akila Enema Keves, and therefore with the evidence, if they were Zorik to Dam, even though the boss was coming, the carbon is kosher. Nuk with Kirabana. Why not interpret like the Rabbana hold that Achila is my Keves? And even with the Evan, if he was Zorik to Dam, the Pesach is possible. There must have been something in the Mishnah that bothered Rav and pushed him to interpret the Mishnah like Rabbi Nassar, like the minority view. And he writes here in the notes, Shekain Kevan Shedivre Rabbi Nassar in Das Yachid V'chacham Cholkim Olav Adif Lahamin K'chachamim Ki Aloche K'Rabin In fact, he says in the note here, I mean, that's another, another research project that he thinks the Ramam holds like, uh, like the Chachamim against Rabbi Nasser. So we haven't accepted Rabbi Nasser. And now you can interpret the Mishnah. What forced you to interpret the Mishnah based on Rabbi Nasser? So we're not denying that we have a Tana that we can stand on the shoulders of the old Hakil Loma Akva. But why did Rav push that into our Mishnah? So my answer is Rav Masnisa she said the language of the Mishnah somehow bothered Rav. Am I tnaim? Why does it say in our Mishnah that in Nitma Basar it says Ein Zorik Es Hadam, which sounds like you know Lachatchil. It's not a good idea to be Zorik at the Dam if Nitma Basar. Listening. It would have been a greater chiddush and a more precise language to use to say possible. Don't tell me ain zorik es adam. Tell me it's possible. The carbon's possible, implying that even zrika is not going to help. Shmami no ain zorik lechatchila avol b'diavet shaper domi. If they went ahead and they were zorik adam, then there's ritzli carbon, and the pesach is kosher. And that could only be explained, says the Gemara, based on Rabbi Nosan. That Achilein and Makeves. But now, if you recall, we started attacking Rav from the Psukim. Ish lefi achlo tachus which indicated that the whole enterprise of the Korban Pesach was all for the sake of Achilah. How can you say Achil lo Makeves? You have a way of interpreting these Psukim? Again, now we don't have to attack Rav anymore because we finally conclusively derived the conclusion that Rabbi Nassan holds that Achil Eidim HaKeves. What is Rabbi Nassan going to do with the Pasuk Ishlif the Achlo Tachus Alaseh? Which clearly indicates that we're not going to shech the Korban Pesach on, some, on behalf of someone unless he's Royal Achila, Ishlif the Achlo. And before we see the Gemara's answer, I just want to point out something about the Gemara's question here. The, the Gemara's question is a, you know, it's, it's it, again, I use the word naive, but I don't mean that in a pejorative sense. I, naive meaning it's, it's, it's the way that you would really read the Pasuk in the Gemara's Kasha if you, if you didn't know any better, if you didn't have Rabbi Nassan to square with. The Pasuk seems to say, that you shech tachusu means you shech the carbon on behalf of someone who's royal achila. Why is the Torah telling me that? You're telling me now that according to Rabbi Nosson, achila ain't a makevus. So you don't have to shech the carbon for someone who's royal achila. So 
So why is the Torah say Yisul Fiyachlo Tachusu? So the Gemara answer is beautiful. And this answer to the Gemara is really answering another question. We should ask another question. We said that if you check the carbon on behalf of a chola or a zakein, chalola or club, the carbon is possible. Why is the carbon possible? <laughs> we said that that achila ain't in my cabin. So you can tell me the chola and zakein are not capable of achila. Okay, so what? You're saying that if nitba basar, the carbon is still kosher. And if you tell me it's not enough for the Kizayas for these new recruits that joined the Chabura, and yet you can check it on their behalf and they'll be Yotze, why is that different than the Cholin and Zokin? My answer is, you know what the Torah is telling you when it says, each lefi ochlo, to be in and gather the chazi lachila. Is the person Roy? He has the potential of eating it. Again, if the boss is Nitma, he can't eat it, but he has he's a Gavra who's Chazi Lachiu. And if there's not enough Kizasim to go around for all the Bnei Chabura, but still he's a Gavra that's Chazi. Masha'enken Cholo Zaken, they don't have the ability to eat the carbon pest. And therefore, it's not a gavra de chazi le'achila. And if you'd ask me, by you know, I used to give chirim on derech alimut. This is a beautiful example of of, of Rab Chaim's approach to learning. Meaning, is the carbon itself roy lachila not irrelevant? You could have nitma basar, and there's no way, no how that anyone could eat from the basar, and the carbon is kosher. But if you ask me not about the chefts of the basar and the carbon itself, but rather about the gavra, to whom or who could qualify as being included in the shritas ha-pesach, it's got to be a gavra who's chazi. If it's a gavra lo chazi, the whole deal is off, the carbon is possible, and that's called chalol Man Mantana lo hadi ton rabon. Now the Gemara has another b'risa, and we want to understand, in the light of this machlokas between the Rabban and Rabbi Nassan, about whether Achilles HaPesach is Ma'akeves B'Diyeved, or Eina Ma'akeves, let's learn the following verse. Man tana loho du tana Rabbanon, shchot o liochlov, v'zarak doma shalo liochlov, HaPesach atzmo kosher, the Adam Yotzi Bo Yudei Chovaso. In other words, it works like this. The Shechita was for people who are Roy, they are capable of eating exiles. But when we got to the Zrika Saddam, the Kohen had in mind that the Zrika would be on behalf of, let's call them Ruven and Shimon who are Eino Roy, they cannot possibly eat the carbon Pesach, it's a Chol and a Zoke. So the Shechita was okay, but the Zrika was not. So the Brisa says that the Pesach Atzmo Koshe, which means that the Zrika Saddam and the Ktora, Saimurim, everything that's involved, is Koshe. But you cannot eat the carbon pestle. Why? Because the zrika was shaloli ochlov. And if the zrika is shaloli ochlov, that's going to passel, at least as far as Achil is concerned, the karma. That no one's allowed to eat from this karma. So you have an interesting paradox here. Because on the one hand, it says explicitly, a pesach atmo, kosher. No one's eating the carbon because it was a zrika shaloli ochlo. And yet, you yod say, you dey chovasam. I mean, if it says, a pesach asmo kosher, it means that everyone fulfilled their mitzvah. Even though a zrika shaloli ochlo is not going to be matter of the achilles basar, no one will be eating from this carbon pesach, I'll have you know. And yet, they were yod say, 
says that Pesach has more caution. So the Gemara says, Keman, Nema, Rabbi Nosani, Velo Rabbana. You know, if you're talking about the Rabbana, they hold Nachila Sapesk Makeves, how could it be that in Nizrak, Shaloli Ochlov, no one's allowed to eat from the Karmon, and the Karmon is kosher? That's an untenable position. By process of elimination, we have no choice but to author. To consider the author of this mission of this brisa to be none other than Rabbi Nosan, who says Einachilu Makeves. So if the Zrika with Shaloli Ochlov, and no one's allowed to eat from this carbon Pesach, how could they have fulfilled a Pesach Atzmokasher unless you hold like Rabbi Nosan that Einachilu Makeves? Nay, says the Gemara. I'm going to deflect that. Why? Afilu Tamer Rabbanan. You have these three words in the Brisa Shekain, Ha Pesach Atzmo Kosher, which you cannot reconcile with Rabbanon. Says the Gemara, Ein Machsheves Ochlim Bizrika. That the Basar is Royal Achila. We thought that there's no Achila. And if it's not Roy Lachila, the carbon should be possible. How can you justify the price that says Hapeskat Mokosha going to Rabbanon? And we had no choice. And our only possibility was to interpret according to Rabbi Nasan. Hey, we're going to hold down that Ein Machsheves Ochlim is Rika, which means that the Kohen who's doing this Rika could have no valid machshav. When Again, you know, I always tell you this, that when we say valid in Kodshim, we mean that it's invalid. What do I mean? It's only invalid because it's valid, meaning it's only because it registers on the radar screen. That's why it passes the carbon. So if you have a machshava poseles, it's got to be a machshava that could be a good, valid machshava. Now, in the case of Zrika, there's no such thing as a machshava liochlo. The purpose and the goal of the Zrika, the agenda of the Zrika, has nothing to do with Achilles Sabasa. It's for the purpose of the carbon and the Kaporis HaKarbon. Now, it's true that as a result of the Kaporis HaKarbon, the recent carbon and the Zrika, now we're allowed to eat the Basar. But that's not inherent in the Zrika. You know, it's the Shechita, it's for the purpose of. Achilas Abbasa. And therefore, his machshava at the time of the Shechita, as far as Ochlim is concerned, is critical. But as far as Zrika is concerned, what, what Shaykh is, what's the connection between Zrika and Achila? Such that now when he has his Zrika, Shaloli Ochlov, you want to tell me that that's a machshava poselis? That's not a machshava poselis. Ain't machshava is Ochlim is Zrika. He says, Rak Vishita Poselis Machsheves Ochlin. Right? When it says each lefi ochlo, we're talking about shita. So the requirement of machshava during the Avodas Hakarban for Achila, that's only in Shita exclusively. Okay. And the asks the following question: Man Tana Lohad the Tana Rabban. Who is the Tana of the following Bryce? Harei Shahaya Echad, one of the Menuhim. On the Pesach was Cholad B'Shas Shchita, VeCholad B'Shas Zrika, or the opposite, Cholad B'Shas Shchita VeCholad B'Shas Zrika. So one of the members of the Menuhim was excluded from Achila either Bishas Shrita or Bishas Rika is Ain Shokatim Vizarkim Ol Ache Cholim Ishas Shrita Ad Shas Zrika. 
So we see clearly from this brisa that we must have achila, that achila ma'kevets. Now, when we say achila ma'kevets, you have to have someone who's royal achila, but he can be royal achila either b'shas shlita or b'shas zrika. And, you know, we're going to say he's royal achila if there's some avoda that relates to him, whether it's the shlita because he was chalad with shashkita, or the zrika if he was chalad with shashrika. Is keman neima rabbanan he v'lo rabbi nasan? Rabbi nasan old say nachila ma keves. So why do you need that he be roy? Right, let's go through the two cases. The first case was he was a called Shashrita, but he was healthy Bishazrika, so he could eat from the Pesa. Or the second case, he was healthy Bishashrita, he could have eaten the karma, but he got sick Bishazrika. And the Bryce says the following. In other words, we have two critical avodos, and both of them require royal achilot. He's got to be cholim from the time of shchita up until the time, and including the time of zrika, so that all the avodos that are critical, starting with shchita and ending with zrika, were done on behalf of Oakland. Otherwise, the covenant is possible. So we have to assume that this must be the requirement of the Rabbanon against Rabbi Nassan that you need royal achila. Name, says the Gemara. Afilu tem Rabbi Nassan. Even though Rabbi Nassan says it ain't achila ma keves, but gaver de chazi lachila de inon. We're not talking about a case of Nitma Abbasar or we ran out of Kizasim. We're talking about the Gavra who is incapable of Achila. He's ill. In that case, even Rabbi Nasser would agree, as we saw before the same Tzvara point of Rav, that the carbon is possible because we need a Gavra who's Roy. And that's a requirement. These are the critical avodos. He says here, Sharei le Rabbi Nasan, this the Havamina, Sover Shein Achila. Ma'keves is ain't talk she hey Adam ochel b'shas zrika b'shas shkita. A few lutema says more no. Rabbi Nosson is more that you need a bailim haruuyim laachila sapesa who bein b'shas shkita who bein b'shas zrika. So again, we don't need that the carbon itself be royal laachila. For example, the Rav's case of Nitma Abbasa. But we need that the Gavra for whom this carbon is being brought be Royal Achila. And that requirement of Royal Achila, even Rabbi Nassan agrees to, and both Bishashkita and Bishashrik. Gemara, and then, which we'll get to tomorrow, Mr. Shem again brings another price and tries to figure out. Where the Brisa reflects the sheet of the Chachamim or Rabbi Nossin. This machlokas between Chacham and Rabbi Nossin is so fundamental. You know, we intuitively align ourselves with the Rabbanon because, not just because the majority wins, but because we always know that that's what Karbas is all about. It's got to be Roy Leochlin. And that's why Machshevish Shalom Leochlin passes the Karbon, Shalom Limnuya passes the Karbon. 
but uh, the Gemara takes Rabbi Nosson so seriously. I mean, the Gemara accuses Rav of interpreting our Mishnah like Rabbi Nosson because he was convinced that Rabbi Nosson's logic is compelling. Okay, then. Stop here. Thank you so much. Have a great day.